Food. Food is tasty. Tasty. It powers our bodies, our minds, and our Bugatti's. What color is yours? Food is a question and an answer. But in 2004, one man dared to ask. What did he ask? Why do we food? I'm gonna get this out of the way so I don't end up bringing it up later. Pyrocynical fat. <laughs> Think of the best documentaries you've ever seen. Blackfish, Free Solo, Fat Cry 3, all works of art in their own right. They all rank highly amongst the top documentaries of all time lists. But you will notice that they all share <laughs> one. one thing in common. None of them contain the documentary Super Size Me. 54 documentaries that will change your life? Nope. 65 best documentaries of all time for a life-changing watch? Nuh-uh. Also, what the Bruh. f*** is that title? Are we just adopting Japanese light novel naming schemes for things now? Because if so, I propose we change Super Size Me to White Piece of <laughs> Eats a lot of McDonald's and suffers from severe liver failure in another world with my sister. One thing you will never see me do is defend Americans, especially American corporations, because I am what the kids call based and among pilled. Get on Tesla and Burger King all you want. God knows they deserve it. Steal from Walmart. Just go in, bring a gun. Corporations are evil, but this guy made a documentary that completely misses the mark. Are the corporations to blame? Or maybe it's the people in their choices? Or possibly it's more subtle and nuanced. Well, the creator of Super Size Me sure doesn't know. Yeah, if you eat 6,000 calories a day and do nothing but sit and play Warwick Jungle, you're gonna pack on a few pounds. But I and millions of others were forced to watch this Walter White looking c stuff his face full of food and throw up in a parking lot multiple times through our school journey. I've seen it enough times to declare myself a caloric expert, and that was obviously the result that everyone's teachers wanted to get. So if this documentary has made me smart enough to make healthier choices, then it has also made me smart enough to completely tear it to sh- This is our main protagonist, Mr. Morgan Spurlock, the man with the name of a 90s cartoon villain. Fun fact about him, Morgan is a self-admitted Baba Bowie. Allegedly. Back in 2017, when a lot of men were getting exposed for being incapable of not Baba Bowie women, Mr. Spurlock had the genius idea to tell on himself for Baba a woman. Allegedly. He posted something incredible on the world's greatest website, Twitter.com. As I sit around watching hero after hero, man after man, fall at the realization of their past indiscretions, I don't sit by and wonder who will be next. I wonder, when will they come for me? You see, I've come to understand after months of these revelations that I'm not some innocent bystander, I'm also part of the problem. Speaking of forcibly stuffing meat into someone's face, you made a bad Already, we are starting with severe emotional manipulation. We are showing a bunch of kids singing the United States National Anthem. An all-time freedom blessed goddamn classic. And it's very obvious that this is meant to tug on the heartstrings of the average American viewer. It's just so ingrained in their blood, just mm, KFC. I grew up in West Virginia, currently the second fattest state in America. When I was growing up, my mother cooked dinner every single day. Almost all my memories of her are in the kitchen. <laughs> Throughout the opening sequence, Morgan is attempting to establish the sheer amount of control that these corporations have on the fast food market. In the United States alone, McDonald's accounts for 43% of the total fast food market. They're everywhere. He also goes on to say that people are suing McDonald's for their poor health choices, stating, Lawyers for McDonald's call the suits frivolous, stating that the dangers of its food are universally known, and that these kids can't show that their weight problems and health woes were caused solely by their McDiets. The judge states, however, that if lawyers for the teens can show that McDonald's intends for people to eat its food for every meal of every day and that doing so would be unreasonably dangerous, they may be able to state a claim. But that's the point of a business, no? To get customers in and to make billions of dollars and exploit the working class so you and your friends can go to Mars and have some with kids. The true American dream. You don't see alcoholics complaining that the White Claw Corporation is evil. No, no, you don't understand. It's White Claw's fault that drinking and driving is so much fun. If you really think about it, that family of four had it coming. You don't see that, and you would never see that out in the real world because it's dumb. Is fast food really that bad for you? 
I mean, what was Holy fuck, white man jump scare. We need to get you a goddamn bell or like a warning sign for a mustache that aggressive. Jesus, give me flashbacks to St. Augustine's Catholic school. F <laughs> Mr. Spurlock's main argument is... I actually don't know. At one point, it's about how corporations are bad, and they're trying to control you with seed oil and microplastics. And then for some reason, it becomes a YouTube challenge video to see how many calories you can eat before you die. And then he goes into a school and starts filming children. It can't pick what it wants to be, so it ends up being a jumbled up mess. But at the beginning, Morgan really wants to talk about the now long dead gimmick known as supersizing. I mean, what would happen if I ate nothing but McDonald's for 30 days straight? Would I suddenly be on the fast track to becoming an obese American? Would it be unreasonably dangerous? Let's find out. I'm ready. Supersize me. He tries to pose the question, is this a predatory practice? Do you ever have a supersized Coke? I will only supersize it if they ask me. Now remember, we're supersizing everything. Small, medium, large, and supersized. And yes, it very much so is. I am antisocial as sh If an employee of an establishment offers me any kind of upsell, I am too much of a pussy to say no. Okay, sir, that'll be $3.50 for an extra 99 cents. Would you like me to fuck you in the ass? Eh, yeah, sure, why not? In 2004, Morgan states, Obesity is now second only to smoking as a major cause of preventable death in America, with over 300,000 deaths per year associated with related illnesses. But now, in the year 2023, somehow, Worldwide, there is 2.8 million people die of B fat per year. Um, so I know 2004, Morgan, you really thought you were doing something with this, but L. I knew if I was going to do this, I would need some serious medical supervision. So I enlisted the help of not one, but three doctors. Morgan is now going to get a physical to prove to everyone that he is the healthiest boy ever. No wholesome Reddit chonkers here. Any alcohol use? Now, none. You don't smoke. I, I used to, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Any drug use at all? Not for a long time. <laughs> so, what were you doing then, Morgan? A little bit of that schneef? A little bit of that Apex Legends go-go juice? You don't exactly seem like the bastion of health that you are claiming to be. We're gonna do a rectal exam. Okay, so I have blurred this bit because I am not trying to get anally examined by YouTube. You have the luxury of looking at a bunch of blurred pixels. Me and a million other kids back in middle school did not. Zero warning, just I'm going to do an anal exam and boom, finger in the ass. So I watch a lot of gay porn, right? Like as an adult now. But when I was 13, I don't think I consented to this. I don't remember the form my parents had to sign saying, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Flaysfire, we are about to embark on a journey of learning about the dangers of obesity and overeating. Also, there's a little bit of gay porn, XD. It's a lot like those TikTok cooking videos where they show food being prepared and then just like flash for like two milliseconds, just two dudes kissing. After the probing, we spend an entire three minutes circle jerking about how healthy Mr. Spurlock is. Which is less than 200 and it's really superb. Your blood level's fine, your iron level is good as well. Diabetes. This, your fasting blood sugar is very low. The other thing that we looked at were all your electrolytes in terms of your salts in your blood, your kidney function, your liver function. They were all perfect. Your general health, you know, you're, you're, is outstanding. So you're starting off terrific. And a big thing to note is that two thirds of his doctors say that his triglycerides are going to go up. And one specifically says, As far as you gaining weight, you probably will. As far as your cholesterol going, up, it probably will. Um, as far as you're feeling miserable, maybe. I don't know. That is very obvious, and I am not a doctor. In fact, I am no, very no, stupid, no, no, no. but I could still foresee those outcomes without a medical degree. But then the doctor says something that catches my attention. Unless you start cheating and just, just order the salads. Why don't you just cheat and eat a salad? McDonald's has salad. And that's what I'm saying. Scout TF2 moment. Nice hustle, tons of fun. Next time, eat a salad. McDonald's has salads. They have eggs. They have water. They have the motherfucking McRib. Baby, McRib is back. Make sure you use code FLACEFIRE at checkout to save 30%. Morgan makes it abundantly clear that he doesn't trust the word of just the three doctors that he personally enlisted. So he brings in a fourth person, a dietitian, And she says something incredibly important that Spurly Whirly is going to choose to ignore. Your calorie needs are going to be averaging about 2,500 calories a day. Morgan's initial weigh-in is 185.5 pounds of pure masculine handlebar mustache meat. Now keep that number in mind because it's going to be important later. 
Foreshadowing is a liter- I know he's gonna do it for a month, but I think after a week he's gonna be really irritated. <laughs> I think it's gonna affect our relationship. <laughs> you are a vegan chef. Yes, I'm a vegan chef. Uh, I just don't know if I can... Of course I will. I'll sit next to him while he eats McDonald's. Of course I will. I'm just gonna be rolling my eyes the whole time. Mm. I now know why Morgan is undertaking this hellish experiment. Not to educate the American people on the dangers of fast food and poor choices, but because he is so sick of his hipster girlfriend's vegan garbage that he wants to slowly kill himself with Ron's delicious juicy meat. And I'm not knocking vegans, your lifestyle is more than valid and you are appreciated. Love you kings and queens and in-betweens. I'm just saying that specifically this vegan is a terrible cook and should be sentenced to prison for the maximum amount of years that the law will allow. We have an actual mud pie. The quinoa salad looks pretty good. Just a fucking artichoke and then a bowl of loose lettuce. That's really good. That's good, right? Mm -hmm. Morgan, I know you're a terrible person, but blink twice if you need rescuing from 2004. The rules. Rule one. I will only supersize it if they ask me. Rule two. I can only eat things that are for sale over the counter at McDonald's. Water included. If McDonald's doesn't sell it, I can't eat it. Rule three. I have to have everything on the menu at least once over the next 30 days. And rule four. And I have to have three squares a day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Why? This seems pretty fucking arbitrary. Oh, so you want to mimic the American diet. What would happen if I ate nothing but McDonald's for 30 days straight? Would I suddenly be on the fast track to becoming an obese American? More than 60% of Americans get no form of exercise. So for the next 30 days, Neither will I. That's fair because the average American is one McNugget away from becoming. Don't so say guys, it. Don't say it. it. We don't say it. Don't millions. say it. But why? Why force yourself and by extension us to witness cosmic horrors unimaginable? It's a pretty basic concept that if you live an unhealthy lifestyle, your health is going to suffer. We don't have to go there. You know, we don't have to shop with them. We can easily go in McDonald's and grab a salad, but we choose not to. Based woman. Based Brenda Hoover. I love you. I think there's a lot of focus on the fast food companies because they are mentioned more than virtually all the other causes in most of the articles and books and studies about why it's a sudden epidemic. Again, it can't be the neighborhood restaurant. We've had neighborhood restaurants for hundreds of years. Okay, Baldy McOldstein is kind of right, but there is a larger issue that is going unaddressed as to why people gravitate towards fast food. It's cheap. Not all of us can be as financially advantaged as Mr. John F. Bonzoff III. We can't all afford an office with thousands of random papers thrown everywhere, except for one specific spot on the desk where there is a conveniently placed ad for CNN with a mug somehow facing directly towards the camera, coincidentally, amongst a rat's nest of garbage. Coincidentally. Some of us, when we're hungry and starving, can only afford the Macca's dollar menu. You want me to cook at home? You want me to cook in my house, in this economy? You're in 2004. You haven't even experienced the 2008 housing collapse yet. Shut the fuck up. I think in terms of responsibility, it's fair to point the big gun at McDonald's. McDonald's is one of the biggest, but more importantly, it is the one with far more than all the others, lures in young children. I absolutely hate that I'm agreeing with him, but this man is making some valid points. McDonald's and other corporations do engage in incredibly sketchy practices of advertising directly to children. But you misspoke here. No one is a fan of the McDonald's rape clown. Kids don't like clowns. They are much more drawn to gnomes. Clowns are terrifying and a danger to children. Another man who is worried about the kids is Samuel Hirsch. He represents the two girls who are suing McDonald's, with much advisement coming from Professor Banzaf. Why are you suing the fast food establishment? You mean motives besides uh, monetary re uh, compensation? You mean you want to hear a noble cause? Is that it? Um... What kind of a fucking response is that? So the lawsuit literally is just for money. It's not about how terribly these girls' health was affected because their parents were negligent. A lawsuit was filed in New York on behalf of two teenage girls. One who is 14 years old, four foot 10, and 170 pounds. The other, 19 years old, five foot six, and 270 pounds. No, their parents were no. stuffing them up like a butterball turkey for that fat payday. One typical bagel that one is eating that looks something like this 
is going to comprise five servings of bread. That's just dumb. Back in 2004, you could just say shit and get away with it. The average plain bagel is about 75 grams. And per that 75 grams, there's about 200 calories. Well, in contrast, the average plain white slice of bread is around 35 grams. And per that 35 grams, there is about 90 calories per slice. So if we take that one piece of bread and we multiply it by five to get five pieces of bread, we can see very clearly why Mrs. Young went into the nutrition field and not the math sector. But it doesn't take this advanced quantum physics equation to just look at the goddamn plate. There's very clearly more bread than bagel. I don't care if it's Jewish, bread is bread. So I do not trust her judgments when it comes to math. But I do trust what she's saying when it comes to the size increases over time. We can very clearly see that on screen and through dozens of BuzzFeed reacting to American food videos. Cars have introduced larger cup holders to accommodate those huge 7-Eleven double gulps, which are 64 ounces a half gallon. That's just not true. It don't fucking fit. It don't fit. Lisa, why are you lying to the American people? I, I know they're dumb, but they're not setting. that dumb. Like, yeah, could I get the uh, double quarter pounder with cheese meal? I think I'm gonna have to go supersize. All right, Spurlock, you've set out your rules, and so far, you've been playing ball. That's fair. She asked you for the supersize, you got the supersize. But there isn't a gun to your head forcing you to make the most unhealthy option. You know they sell water at McDonald's, right? I'm pretty sure that it's free. Unless Elon is holding the world's supply and trying to sell it back to us for only cum coin. They do sell Diet Coke, they do sell lower calorie options. You don't need to consume the maximum amount of calories to inflate your numbers for your experiment. And yes, within your guidelines, you do have to order it, but nowhere within your four rules do you have to eat it all in one sitting. Double quarter pounder with cheese. More calories than anything. There it is. A little bit of heaven. Mmm. You get all that super size stuff? That stuff gets super size? Man. Look at that. I just put a but I'm just not even, I'm not even halfway done with those fries. You do have to order breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but you can save it and spread it out throughout the day. You can give it to a homeless man. You can just throw it in the garbage. You can just gather a bunch of small sticks and twigs together and set it on fire and just toss the McDonald's into the inferno. Just some suggestions that you could have done instead of choosing the most bombastic option in order to manipulate people. See, now's the time of the meal when you start getting the McStomach ache. You start getting the McTummy, the Mc, you, get the, you get the McGurgles in there. You get the McBrick, and you get the McStomach ache. Right now, I got I got some McGas that's rocking. If you were to eat the equivalent calories that you just ate in salad, you would still feel like shit because that's a lot of food. Okay, so you had a 40 ounce Coke, a double, double quarter, quarter pounder, pounder with cheese, and a super size fry. So that comes out to about. 1,670 calories, which is equivalent to. About that fucking much. Guys, I'm trying to lose weight, so I've been eating a uh, healthy salad. There may be kids starving in Africa, but I am not starving here. Matt Stoney who? Ethan Klein who? I am the one who eats the food. I haven't even put a fucking dent in this bitch, and the bit is getting old. Oh my god, I'm starting to get the salad shakes. Mm -hmm. Why am I getting erect? I pooped. Oh my god. I pooped. Ah! I don't even know what the fuck this bit is anymore. Mm, yes. Equivalency. A normal human being would not eat this much salad. Therefore, a normal human being should not eat that much burgers. It doesn't matter how much you eat, moderation is king. Oh, sorry, a broke character there. I mean, ah! <laughs> All done. I know there's a little lettuce left on the table, but that lettuce can fucking kill itself. Is this what it feels like to be pregnant? <laughs> oh. 
Okay, that's a bit of an overreaction, don't you think? I'm just gonna lightly set the drink down. So I went to fucking McDonald's and I picked up something semi-equivalent to Mr. Morgan's order. A Big Mac. Large Dyke. Double Quarter Pounder. Routine, eh? So we did a little math and there is this many calories here. First, we got a little bit of the Big Mac. Big Mac, gone. Double Quarter Pounder with cheese. Why is it called a Double Quarter Pounder? That's two fractions of one-fourth. Just call it a half a pounder. These paper straws are so shitty and gay. Can I kill a couple turtles to get my plastic straws back, please? <laughs> Just pounded a double quarter pounder. Now it is time for the world's shittiest poutine. Oh, Canada. Poutine, gone. Gravy, on my brand new bed. I swear it's not cum, it is burger grease. Coke. Hey, that's pretty good. Well, it's been just about 10 minutes. I've eaten 2,000 calories. I feel like I want to die, but I do not have the Mick shakes, the Mick brick, or the Mick urge to throw up in the McDonald's parking lot. The most I feel is that I will take a massive Mick diarrhea in about 30 minutes. I don't feel like I am going to throw up now or any point in the future because I'm not a little bitch. That was very easy. I don't know what to say. Skill issue. The toxic environment is constant access to cheap, fat-laden foods. It's gas stations that sell more candy and sodas than gas. It's a nation where there are more than three million soda vending machines. That's one for every 97 Americans. Counterpoint. Japan. Japan actually has one vending machine per 24 people, which is much higher than the US average. I know they sell a lot more hentai down there than they do McDonald's Sprite, but I would very easily be able to break the bones of the average Japanese person, and I would be flattened by the average American. So don't blame it on the vending machines. Pikachu vending machine didn't do nothing. There's something else going on here. I'm getting this really weird feeling right in my midsection, like basically in my penis right now. It's just like this. Hey man, how's it going? All right. I know you like to eat a lot of food cause like you're obese. Uh, have you ever been to McDonald's and after you ate like a Big Mac, has your dick ever gone like, <sighs> Same thing with this. I made a past day three. Okay, Morgan, what is that? Because that appears to be the lunch you just had ordered in. I can see two drinks that are most certainly filled with Coke, a Big Mac box, and a supersized fry, as well as a small, undetermined bag that is either full of a mysterious item or air. Uh -huh. Considering that you've already tried a Big Mac during one of your previous days of your experiment, you could have gone a little bit lighter on lunch. I you are supposed to try one of every item. Doesn't mean you gotta eat the Big Macs constantly. You're being disingenuous to the American people. Now it is time for the best part of the entire documentary. Rock and roll McDonald's. Rock and roll McDonald's. Whenever Morgan brings on other people to speak, it's incredibly hit or miss if it's going to be a brain-numbingly obvious statement that is at least a little bit correct, or a complete Bat shit take that was sourced from the journal of just me, bro If the diabetes starts before the age of 15 you lose somewhere between 17 and 27 years of lifespan now these speakers are correct Obesity is a terrible problem and if not solved will lead to many children and adults suffering from crippling health conditions Including but not limited to hypertension coronary heart disease stroke uh, cancer flashback <laughs> But the thing that all of these speakers seem to miss is that the root cause of the obesity epidemic is in fact society. <laughs> According to the new research, the direct medical costs associated with diabetes have doubled. The direct medical costs have doubled in the past five years from $44 billion in 1997 to $92 billion in 2002. The issue of lower income people being unable to access healthier, more affordable options because they simply don't fucking exist is completely lost on Morgan and the interviewees. So without further ado, let's welcome Jared Fogel. Oh my fucking God. My big thing was never smoking, it was never drinking. Obviously it wasn't doing drugs. My big vice was- Fucking kids. 
you're a real inspiration to the kids. I appreciate that. <laughs> One of the greatest. Jared. Jared, get your hands off her right now. We're just gonna speed run through this section because it contains little to nothing of relevance to this movie. This dude's uncle died of a heart attack because he ate too much Ben and Jerry's. One of the triggering factors for me was my uncle, Bert Baskin, my dad's partner and brother-in-law co-founder of the company, died of a heart attack. Well, boo fucking who. Both my uncles, Ben and Jerry, died of a heroin overdose. We all got dead family. It is now the fifth day of his experiment, and Morgan is checking in with his dietitian. Jeez, uh, gee, maybe you should consider, uh, man, going for, uh, like a smaller size? <laughs> Burger. At his weigh-in on the fifth day, Morgan is now 194 pounds. That is an 8.5 pound increase from his initial weight. And I need to call bullshit because let's say for the sake of argument, every meal he's been consuming has been 2,000 calories. And that's being generous. Let's keep the generosity going. We'll count the entire fifth day as well. That so far gives us a total of 30,000 calories consumed. Again, being generous. It takes an additional 3,500 calories on top of the daily recommended 2,500 per day for the average Average male to gain one pound, meaning it takes 6,000 calories per day to gain one pound. So using advanced NASA level trigonometry, <gasps> Morgan, you should have only gained five pounds. Where's that extra three and a half coming from? It's certainly not water weight. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively obvious. Fast forward to day nine, Morgan has eaten a filet -o fish and some McNuggets. He is apparently feeling chest pain and depression. I started to have like some chest, not chest pains, but like pressure. You know, I feel like I got pressure on my chest. I don't feel good today. Not that I feel sick, but um, I just feel really depressed. We are introduced to the ultimate human specimen, a being made of pure hashtag burger energy. I bought three Big Macs, ate them out there, uh, enjoyed them so much, and I came back about five o'clock at night, bought three more, ate them out there, Came back around 11 o'clock before they closed and uh, ate three more. Don Gorski. This man has eaten nothing but Big Macs at the time of this video for the better part of 50 years. Now you're gonna notice something peculiar about the man who has eaten nothing but McDonald's for his whole life when compared to the man who's eaten McDonald's for nine days. Like I said, I got a comic of somebody that said I was gonna die with a heart attack at 15,000 Big Macs and heck, now I'm over 30,000, I'm still alive. So it's, it's not really the foodie. It's, um, you know, like I say, your lifestyle. Don eats on average about three Big Macs a day. Well, that's more than two a day, so that means there's days I eat three, but that's because they're getting smaller. And maybe a yogurt parfait every once in a while when his wife forces him to. No, it's not all I eat, but it's most of what I eat. Um, I, the only other thing that I eat every other day as far as food goes is parfaits. Uh, when parfaits came out in 2004, the wife made me promise to eat a parfait every day. Women, am I right? <laughs> But because he's consuming on average 1,500 calories a day, he's about as skinny as a Korean pop star. Now, it might come as a shock to you guys, but in moderation, McDonald's is a semi-affordable way to live a relatively healthy lifestyle. I've been doing it for the last six months while I've attended Hustlers University. Top G's three rules to success. Eat burger, traffic women, go to jail, so you don't have to deal with women. What color is your jailmate's cock? I'm gonna show you some pictures, and I want you to tell me who they are. Okay. Who's that? You don't know? George Washington. Yeah? Who is he? He, he was the fourth president. Now, I hate to give Morgan credit because he is a massive piece of shit. But he is right. Kids are dumb. And they're gonna remember Ronald McDonald over the broccoli goblin any day. Who's that? I don't know. I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. George W. Bush? Nope, that's a good guess, though. And these mega corporations prey on kids by advertising directly to them so they will get their parents to go into Arby's and buy them the brand new Arby's Meat Mountain on sale for a limited time. Please sponsor me, Arby's. I'm one of, like, the three people that actually likes your disgusting restaurant. Who's that? McDonald's. Ronald McDonald. Who is it? McDonald's. <laughs> what does he do? He was helping people at the cash register. He worked at McDonald's. I love the pancakes. And that's because it's way easier to market the Taco Bell Baja Blast My Ass combo than it is the freshy garbage kale salad. I hate freshy. So yes, Morgan, corporation bad, but in other news, grass grows, birds fly, sun shines, and brother, 
I suck penis. We are on day 10, and Morgan has finally consumed a salad. McDonald's says nutrition information for all their products is available online. But according to the 2000 U.S. Census, more than half of all U.S. homes still don't have internet access. I am unable to criticize Morgs here because for the time being 2004 when this was filmed, he is completely right. No one had computers, Fortnite wasn't around, Furryport didn't exist, and it's so far back that the PlayStation actually had games. In addition, we as a culture weren't nearly as health crazed, so nutritional information was not readily available to the general public. Morgan goes to nearly 40 different stores and struggles at every single one to find any information at all, let alone information that is able to be brought home and properly analyzed. Congratulations, Morgan. You get a pack of fruit gummies. Good boy. It is now time for Morgan's first blood test, and the juices coming out of his veins can only be described as the consistency of children's slime. It is not looking good. Morgan may die soon. I averaged out all the calories for the last nine days, and you're eating, you're still eating over 200% of what your needs are. Mmm, thank you, nutritionist lady. I suggest you cut out all the liquids that you're drinking from McDonald's, except for water. But is Morgan going to listen to this professional's opinion? No, she's a woman. Morgan doesn't respect women. It is now the second weigh in on day 10, and Morgan is currently at 203 pounds. Something isn't adding up. Because remember, he was supposed to be gaining a lot less. Morgan is now venturing into schools, hopefully receiving prior approval from the parole board beforehand, to interview teachers and kids to try and see the negative effects of unhealthy food on children. Which is good. This is what we want. More of this, less of this. Why would you not make the entire documentary? about the effects of obesity and predatory marketing towards kids instead of just haphazardly sprinkling them in to your compilation of eating burgers? <laughs> oh, would that be because it's boring and not sensational? Hey, you know what? That's fair. I do enjoy a good gaslighting of multiple nations education systems. By just offering these up in the lunch line, are, are, we also, are we setting the kids up to make bad choices? No, I don't believe so because a child, like, just like you saw with a child, she's not going to solely eat just that. And a child isn't going to pick up two or three. But that's all she bought. Morgan. This is what we want. Mmm, gorilla-style journalism, just getting up in her face. Look at her, she's sweating. Granted, it's not caffeinated, but it's still filled with sugar. Right. At that point, the question like that, you need to speak to Dr. Ooh, she's about to crack under the pressure. You're getting the information that the people need. Why did we need to see you get finger blasted and vomit a strange red sludge to get here? You know, if you walk through these halls and you're here, these do not look like at-risk, out-of-control kids. It's not that I don't believe you, but this kid is at least alt-right adjacent. For the next several minutes, Morgan makes solid points and collects some sane and rational interviews from people within the school system. Uh, but I'm not here for that. I am here for the degenerate white boy mukbang. They're underfunded. It's easier to cook out of boxes. The school higher-ups are getting a nice payday from the corporations to feed the kids leftovers from the Dashcon ball pit. This is genuinely good journalism. It's too bad it doesn't continue. Day 13. Morgan is now in Texas for some reason, and he is now walking out of McDonald's with yet another massive soft drink despite his nutritionist telling him hey man you should like probably stop that <laughs> yeah nah i'm not gonna completely become vegan just because you want me to i'm not saying you should do it because i want you to i'm saying that you need to think about what you believe is a system that is corrupt and right. immoral and wrong and hurtful hmm you consume big mac yet you still participate in society checkmate okay, liberal no, no. vegans i love and respect you right Right? But you make it so fucking hard. It's now day 18 and we skipped a couple days because I think the saturated fats are starting to impede the blood flow to his penis. Now, if you've been paying attention, you may recall that Morgan has been experiencing some different symptoms throughout his journey. Pressure on my chest. I just feel really depressed. Feels like somebody's yanking on the tendons behind my eyes. When we do have sex, I gotta tell you, he's not quite as energetic as he used to be. <laughs> my body officially hates me. Now keep that in mind. In fact, there are only seven items on the McDonald's menu that contain no sugar whatsoever. French fries, chicken McNuggets, hash browns, sausage, Diet Coke, coffee, and iced tea. Then eat fucking those. God 
damn. We literally, 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 fuck, literally. I turned into Leafy there for a second. We literally have a man that you showcased in your own documentary that has eaten nothing but Big Macs and is doing perfectly fine. If you gorge yourself on McDonald's and alcohol to the extent that you're sick and showing signs of liver failure, you're obviously going to be in poor health. Oh, did I say alcohol? It's very non-specific, but it means the liver, the liver is sick. And did that doctor just say you were having problems with your liver? <laughs> Uh, so remember at the beginning when I said that Morgan snitched on himself for Baba Boom women? Allegedly. Well, after blaming everyone under the sun except himself for his actions, he then says, Is it because I've been constantly drinking since the age of 13? I haven't been sober for more than a week in 30 years. Huh. That's pretty interesting, Mr. Morg Lester. So did you drink constantly through the entire documentary, or did you take a week off in between and go through a little bit of alcohol withdrawal? Because either way, that would very nicely explain the extra weight gain and the clear symptoms of alcohol withdrawals and abuse. You know, the headaches, the shakes, the nausea, your dick not working, specifically an unhealthy liver. Somebody were doing this to the level with alcohol. They could theoretically wipe out the liver, you know, wipe out all the liver cells. Even your doctor says he's never seen anything like this with just an unhealthy diet before. I've never heard of anybody doing this to the liver with, 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 a, with a high fat diet. He can't fucking comprehend it. You must be one special boy, Morgan. And this isn't just speculation either. I'm not pulling this out of my ass. I, I don't have a time machine. I can't go back and physically prove any of this, but I do have direct quotes from the creator. Oh, and on the Bubba. thing, an innocent person doesn't just come forward with little to no prompting and admit to being a Bubba boy. That's something a Bubba boy who is scared of being exposed for Bubba. does to try and downplay the Bubba. allegations. Allegedly. We are then forced to watch as Boogie2988 gets his gastric bypass surgery and his chiclet teeth installed. And then we jump to day 21. Morgan cries really and pisses and shits. Oh, I'm such an alcoholic. Oh, everything hurts. Oh, ouchie, my liver. Oh, I've got sclerosis. Oh. I'm to get my breath back. And, uh. That is not my edit. Trying to get my breath back. And, uh. <laughs> what, what the f where did he go? Would you at least consider taking aspirin once a day now that you're on this ridiculous diet? Uh. Uh, maybe. No, I can't take an aspirin. They don't sell aspirin at McDonald's. They do sell vodka, though. I can drink a little bit of that, but aspirin? No. The results for your liver are uh, obscene beyond anything I would have I would have thought. Oh, must have been the McDonald's Rick and Morty Szechuan sauce. Not the 80 breezers a day you've been drinking. My advice to you as a physician is that you've got to stop. You're pickling your liver. Pickling your liver? Pickle? Alcoholism? That's just like pickle This is a pretty bad documentary written by a terrible man. I'm upset that I had to watch this multiple times as the peak of health information throughout my school years. For the majority of its runtime, it lies or greatly exaggerates the truth, and Morgan acts like a complete moron. Willfully ignoring the advice and warnings of health professionals despite knowing what the outcomes of his experiment will be, he is going to get fat and unhealthy. For some reason, this documentary was, and still is, held in semi-high regard for being a good source of information. If you're the kind of person who needed to be told this information, I have a friend in Nigeria that is in need of some money. This documentary does have some bits of value, but they are focused on very briefly and very late into its runtime. It cost around $66,000 to produce and has raked in a little over $22 million. I for one hope that Morgan used his $22 million to purchase copious amounts of alcohol and drink himself into liver sclerosis. Follow me on Twitter. I shit it in my pants. I am for real. Never meant to make my booty shit. I apologize, I shit my pants. I shit it in my pants. I am for real.